Hello, everyone. Welcome to the session on uh, hashing. So in fact, uh, this is also a part of your uh, input enhancement and uh, time space thing. So where in this particular hashing concept, before performing any operation, so we're going to have a pre-computed information. So with the support of that pre-computed information, so I can perform the operations like a search, insert, and deletion operation at a faster rate. In a simple way, I want to say that I can improve the time efficiency with the least consideration of your memory space. So to achieve that, so we are going to one of the concept called as hashing. Basically hashing is used to map a given value with a particular key for faster access of uh, elements. So there will going to be a particular value and that value will going to be mapped with a key value. So this mapping normally we used to do with the support of your hash function. So we used to have a function called as hash function where this hash function is used to map a given value with a particular key for faster access of your elements. And the efficiency of this mapping, always it depends on your hashing function that we use. Let us consider a simple example here. Let the hash function h of x map the value at the index x modulus 10. So this is the hashing function which we have considered. So x is a value. This should have to be modulus by 10. So whatever the remainder we get, so that will go into the key value. In that corresponding key value, that is at that particular index of an array, so we need to store your given value. For the sake of example, we are consider a few elements here, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And obviously, after applying this hash function x modulus 10, these elements 11, 11 modulus 10, the reminder is 1, it will going to be stored in a position 1 here. 12, 12 modulus 10. So the reminder will going to be 2. So it will going to be stored in the array index of 2. The same way, the rest of the number 13 at the index of 3. 14 at the index of 4, 15 at the index of 5, right? So it will going to be in the stored in an array. So that array normally we call it as a hash. See this representation. So these are the elements which you are talking just now. This is your hash function. H of x is equal to x modulus 10. After applying this hash function, these values will be mapped to this corresponding key values. 11 here, 12 here, 13, 14, and 15. And this in total corresponds to your hash table. And basically this hash table is a data structure that store elements and performs the operations like insertion, search, deletion, and all this operation will going to be performed in a time of big one time. That means at one shot, I can able to perform the insertion, I can able to perform a search, or I can able to perform a deletion. And basically this is an alternative method. This hash table is an alternative method for representing your district, the list of elements. And these are some of the operations which we can perform. Search, insert, delete. Compute f of k and see if pair exists. Pair in the sense is nothing but a value key pair. Okay, for a given value, compute f of k and see whether that particular element exists in your list or not. The same if I want to insert any new element, compute f of k and place it in that corresponding position. If I want to delete, compute f of k and delete the pair in that particular position, both the key as well as the base should have to be deleted from your hash table. So always in ideal situation, the hash table search, insert or delete. So we're going to take a 
maximum efficiency of b equal of one. So in this, there is a problem called as a collision. When the hash value of a key maps to an already occupied bucket of the hash table. For example, key of i is mapping to this index value b. And I want to insert one more element. So this element is also generating the same key value that is b. Right? So that means I'm supposed to place k i, k and k of j in the same location. So it's a problem here, right? So this type of problem normally we call it as collision here. So I cannot able to insert a, another element to an already occupied bucket of the hash table. And this type of problem normally we call it as collision. And there are different techniques to avoid this collision. So they have been broadly categorized as uh, separate chaining. In turn, we call it as open hashing, open addressing, or your closed hashing. So under your closed hashing, so we'll be discussing on uh, linear probing as well as on double hashing. So let us discuss each of these things uh, one by one. First, let me go with your uh, separate chaining or open hashing. And all these techniques are meant to avoid the collision in your hash table. Separate chaining or open hashing. So obviously, this is a technique to handle the collision. And this creates a link list to the slot for which the collision occurs. Suppose for a particular slot, if there is a collision, so for that particular slot, so it will going to create a link list. A chain-like list will going to be created at the collision slot the new key will going to be inserted in that particular link list. These link list to the slot appears like a chain form. That's why it's been called as separate chaining. So where the collision has been happened for that particular slot, a link list will going to be formed and that link list will going to be the chain form and that is why it has been called as separate chain. So we can see the example here. Consider example, for the following list of words. A is a word, food, and is money or so parted. So some of the words, so which I want to store it in your hash table by the support of your hash function. So I have defined the hash function something like this. We'll add the position of the words letter in the alphabet and compute the sums reminder after division by 30. So what we are doing is, for example, A. So what's the position in the alphabet? It's the first letter. So it's only one character, the position is one. So that should have to be divided by 13 and whatever the reminder I'll get. So at that particular reminder, I used to store your word A. So one modulus 13, the reminder will going to be one, the hash value for your word A will going to be one. The same way for full, F. So F is being located at the sixth position in your alphabet. O, I think it's 15. One more O, 15. L, it's been located at the 12th position. You can Count it in your alphabet uh, set here. Yeah, it is uh, six. For O, it is 15. Again for O, there's one more O. It's again the 15. L, for L it is 12. Make the summation of this word letters position in the alphabet, right? And then, after computation, computing the sum, that should be divided by 13. I need to make the consideration of the reminder. I think uh, if I count this, this will going to be 48, 48 modulus 13. So the reminder will going to be nine. So you can see that. The same and is 
So we have computed the hash value. I'll leave it to you to make the computation of this hash. Now, yay. One, the slot is free. I can place it over here, no issue. Four, nine, the slot is free. I can place it here. And six, the slot is free. I can place over here. Is slot is 10. I can place it here. Money, seven, no issue. R, 11. I place it one here. Soon. See, these two words are pointing to the same hash value 11. There is a collision here among these two words because both these are preferring the same slot. So when there is a collision, these alphabets or these words should have to be in a chain manner. So I link this soon uh, to the list of your R here. That means I'm going to create a link list for these two words where the collision has happened. But well, no issue, one list, one element in this particular list. So this is how we need to create a separate chain in. So when there is a happening of a collision. Okay, so this we call it as a separate uh, chaining and also another term we call it as open hash. On the other side, there is a concept called as uh, closed hashing, which we call it as open addressing. Under this closed hashing, so we'll be concentrating on two major techniques. One is uh, linear probing and another one is your double hash. So in closed hashing, all keys are stored in a hash table itself without the use of a linked list. In the previous technique, that's in your open hashing. So when there is a collision, I used to create a list, link list. But here in this case, I do not use a link list when the collision happened. So I'll store all the information in your hash table. So one of the simplest technique uh, that we are using in your closed hashing is your linear probing. So in the case of your linear probing, check the cells forming the one where the collision has occurred. A check whether there is a collision occurring or not. If the cell is empty, the new key is installed there, no issue. If the cell is already occupied, so in that case, I need to move on to the availability of the cell. That is, the immediate successor should have to be checked there. If it is available, so there I am supposed to place your item. I do not make a list over here at the collision slot. So what I do is, if the slot is empty, I'll insert there. If the slot is not empty, I'm going to find the immediate successor. That is the next position. I'll check out whether it's empty or not. If it is empty, I'll place it over there. Suppose if the next slot is not empty, so I'll wrap up to the beginning of the table. See this last sentence. Note, if the end of the hash table is reached, the search is wrapped to the beginning of the table. That is, it is treated as a circular array. So here in this case, insertion is not at all a problem. The same uh, words I have considered. I computed the hash address, the same hash function I used. Okay. When I consider A, so A is hash values one, no issue. This has been placed here. Next, nine. When I consider nine, A is already occupied in this one and full here. Slot is empty. I place it over here. Next. I consider and, slot is six, empty, no issue. Next, is, slot is 10, no issue. Next, money, slot is empty, okay, no issue. R, slot is free, I could have inserted here. Soon, index value is 11, that is hash value is 11, but it's already been occupied. If it is occupied, so I'm supposed to check the successor location, the immediate successor location, this location. So it's empty. If it is empty, I'm supposed to place that particular word in this location. I do not create a separate list. I'm going to insert at the next available empty slot. Next, 
parted. So this parted index value 12 already some word has been occupied. I am supposed to go to the first location because it's a circular cube, right? So after 12, I'll come to the zeroth location. It's empty. I'll place it over here. So insertion is not at all an issue, but in the case of the deletion, there will go into the air. For example, let us assume that I want to delete this word R. I'll determine the hash value. I get the hash value as 11. I delete it here. After deleting this, right, I want to find the word soon in your hash value, your hash table. Soon value is 11. I'll go to this index, but it's empty. Empty in the sense it finds that. So that particular word is not there in your hash table. It says that the search does not exist, but it has exist. So this is one of the limitations what has been causing in the case of your linear probe. So even we have a simple algorithm for this. Linear probe insert K. If table is full, error. Right, we, do, we should have a sufficient space in your hash table. If you do not have a sufficient space in your hash table, if it is completely full, you cannot make the insertion of any element. Probe is equal to H of uh, K. That means uh, I'm determining the hash value. That hash value is that they will be assigned to the variable probe. If table of probe, if it is already occupied, if it is occupied, so then I'm supposed to increment it by one. Probe is equal to probe plus one until if there is a space there right if table probe again it's occupied again increment modulus m until we find a slot free so at that free slot so initialize your k value if the current location is used try, try the next table location use less memory than chaining as one does not have to store all those link but slower than the chaining as one might have to walk along the table for a long time Obviously, it will go into consume more time compared to your chaining that is separate chaining because it has to walk along the table for a long time, right? That's the only limitation what you can see in your linear probe. And another technique uh, under your uh, closed hashing is your double hashing. So first, what I do is I'll compute h1 of k. That's one function position in the table where we first check for the key. See this, parallel I'll go with your algorithm. Probe is equal to H1 of K. And I'm going to have one more offset is equal to H2 of K. H1 and H2, they are the two separate hashing function. That's why it's been labeled as double hash. If table of probe is occupied, if this is occupied, so then this probe value should be Added with your offset value, whatever the offset we get from your uh, second hashing function. So in your uh, linear probe ring, so this offset value was one there, but here in this case it's not. So this offset value will going to be generated by the another hashing function. So add that offset to a probe modulus m. Again check whether it's occupied or not. If it is not occupied, come out of this while loop. So there you place your key value. Again, if it is occupied, again, that should be incremented by the offset value. In your linear probing, so this offset value will be always the one. But here in this case, the offset value will going to be H2 of K, which we used to get from a second hash function. So this will going to come into the picture, this second uh, hashing function, when H1 of K is already occupied. If H1 of K is not occupied, so then I'm going to use the hash value that has been generated from the first hash function that is from H1 of K. If it is already occupied, I'll make a consideration of a second hash function. So in linear probing, probing always the offset value will be one, but here in this case, it depends on the second hash function. So this is the concept uh, uh, which you need to know about your uh, hashing uh, technique. So as I already mentioned that, so 
for the reduction of the time so we need to pre-process your uh, information before you perform any of the operation in this uh, hashing that is a searching insertion or deletion so once you pre-process your uh, data with that data in a short span in a less time i can easily perform your operation so this is about your hash so thank you